Hi. It's Wendy. Remember? I miss you so much. I miss coming over and reading to you. And I know that school is closed and you're at home and things are really different right now for me too. But this is one thing we can do just like we used to do. Well, kind of like we used to do. So I've picked out a book for you to read today. It's a fun little book, but there's a little bit of scariness in it. So get ready. Get somewhere comfortable because we're going to read The Tale of Peter Rabbit, which is by the author Beatrix Potter. The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. <gasps> Your father had an accident there, and he was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and go, don't get into mischief. I am going out, said Mother Rabbit. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took her basket and umbrella and she went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Look at her on her lovely walk. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were all good little bunnies, they went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, went straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden, and he squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuces, and next some French beans, and then some radishes. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, but after eating all that, he felt rather sick, and he went to look for some parsley to eat. <gasps> but around the end of a cucumber frame, <gasps> who should he meet? But Mr. McGregor. Oh no, what do you think is going to happen? <gasps> Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and he ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief, stop! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten his way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and he went much faster, so that I think he might have almost gotten away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, ran into a gooseberry net. And he got all caught up by the large buttons on his blue jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons and quite new. Peter gave himself up for loss and shed big tears. But his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows. Can you count how many sparrows are there? One, two, three. They flew to him in great excitement and they implored him to exert himself. Go, Peter, go. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop on the top of Peter, but Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind caught in the net. 
Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a watering can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in that tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each one. Oh no. And then presently, Peter sne- <coughs> Mr. McGregor heard it and was after him in no time at all. He tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor to get through, and he was tired of chasing Peter anyway. And so he went back to his work in the garden. <sighs> Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he did not have the least idea of which way to go. He was also very damp from sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all around him. Have you ever felt lost and not know what to do? Peter found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out of the stone over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him, and Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the top of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Can you see the top of the cat's tail? Can you see the goldfish? Where are they? Look carefully. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to the cat. He had heard about cats from his cousin, Benjamin Bunny. Peter went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, 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 scratch, scritch, scratch in the dirt. <gasps> Putter, Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But then, as nothing happened, he came out and he climbed upon a wheelbarrow and he peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. There he is, hoeing onions. Mr. McGregor's back was turned toward Peter, but beyond Mr. McGregor was the gate. Can you see the gate? Look very carefully behind Mr. McGregor. That's the gate that Peter must find to get out. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and he started running as fast as he could go along the straight walk behind some black currant bushes. <gasps> Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped right under that gate oh, and he was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up his little blue jacket and shoes for a scarecrow to frighten off the blackbirds. Doesn't look like the blackbirds are afraid of that, is it? Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. 
He was so tired that he flopped down upon the soft sand of the floor of the rabbit hole, and there he shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in two weeks. I am sorry to say that Peter was not feeling very well that evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea. And she gave a dose of it to him. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. What do you like to eat when you're not feeling well? What is fun to eat when you're tucked into bed? But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, they had bread and milk and blackberries for their supper. That was a good book, wasn't it? I'm so happy to be with you and read it today. Bye.